Hey Rudos, so I got something in the mail today, uh, like usual, because I order way too much stuff, and uh, I want to go ahead and see if we can get it installed. Um, you'll have to excuse me, I did already open it. I was a little bit concerned on account of the shape of the box, quite literally. Uh, it's not really box shaped, but um, thankfully there was a box within a box, and it looks like everything survived, but I didn't get too far into this. Uh, what this is, this is actually two separate things, so I'm going to end up making two videos. Maybe even more. Probably more. If you'll excuse that unboxing goodness. What this is, this is the new um, backlight kit that I made out of China. The all-in-one kit, or formerly known as... I think I called it CDI at one point, or um, a lot of people are still calling it China Shack, but that's a really disingenuous name, and I try to avoid that because that's not the name. Anyway, I ordered two kits, um, one for the Game Boy Pocket, one for the Game Boy Color, and the cool thing about this kit in particular is that it's the same kit, even though I ordered two of them. Sorry, I'm just trying to consolidate the trash. So there's two screens. I will only need one of them. Here is, it looks like this one is for the pocket. And this one is for the color. Um, the motherboards themselves of these two kits are the exact same. I can't really tell because there's all this junk in the way. Open this one up, since it's what I plan on using anyhow. Oh, that's interesting. It came with a, an extra ribbon for a Game Boy Color. Cool. Anyway, um, as you can see, the two motherboards are pretty much identical. But the only difference is the ribbon cable itself. Mine came with both, so that means mine should work with, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, Game Boy Color and Game Boy. And I mentioned I ordered both kits just because I like to show how these things are packaged. You know, maybe help people out make their decision. But I wanted to mention that I ordered both kits, so I don't know if mine was packaged that way because I ordered two kits simultaneously. You know, maybe if you just order one kit, they'll drop it in a bubble mailer and call it a day. I don't know. But mine also came with a couple lenses, and I'm going to try and keep those in the plastic for now. Excuse me just a moment. I'm going to go take care of this trash. All right. So I am going to be installing both of these kits eventually. But tonight, I think I'm just going to install the pocket kit. So we won't be needing this, this, or this, or this. Okay. So thankfully this came with the lens. Unfortunately it didn't come with any spacers, but I think I'm going to try and fix that as well. Um, unlike the Game Boy Color Kit, this kit does require some soldering to install. You have two points on the ribbon that you need to connect up to the motherboard, but it's pretty easy. And if, you, if you're familiar with the process of backlighting the pocket, you have to do some soldering anyway. So I think, I don't, I don't know, I don't think it's too bad. Anyway, here's our donor. Uh, not sure if you're too familiar. Um, but for those that don't know, the Game Boy Pocket had a monochrome screen that was uh, that had passive lighting. It's, I mean, you can adjust the contrast on it. This one's a little bit wonky. It goes a little bit crazy. It also doesn't help that I have an EverDrive in it. Um, but I mean, it it works. It's okay. It's not. I don't know. It, it's not really for me. You can 
um, backlight the original screen itself, and that's what I have here. This is a console that I made a little while ago. Um, I didn't do too good of a job because there's some lines going down there, some dirt in there, but whatever. I mean, it, it works, and turn off all these lights here, you can see the effect. It's okay, but I mean, there's only so much you can do with these screens. The contrast really isn't great. Anyway, if that's still not for you, there is a third option here. I have a, uh, what's called Game Boy Zero. They make these that work in a Game Boy Pocket case. Um, it's another option. Not great, but if you hate that screen, well, there you go. Um, I think this is a topic for a different video, though. So I'm not going to get into the, into that too deeply. Here is tonight's donor here. Um, I would use this one, but I don't know. I'm kind of fond of the stickers. Don't really want to use it. And also the sound on it doesn't work. So don't really feel like fixing something in a mod install video. And I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance because I know this one, this video is going to drag quite a bit. But I'll try and get to the uh, pertinent stuff first. Uh, yeah, so the sound works on this one. Um, first thing we'll need to do, I'm going to go ahead and take it apart. And my apologies, I thought I had screwdrivers handy. Apparently I did not. Just six tri-point screws around the periphery, two by the screen, two in the middle, and then two in the battery compartment. And I should mention, while you're installing this mod, Come on. You should do yourself a favor, since you have the Game Boy part anyway. Clean the Jesus thing. Alright, that's not coming out. That's fine. I'm not going to do that in the sake of, uh, sake of time here. Plus, this thing isn't that disgusting. I never had this one apart cleaned. Alright. Six screws, the back just pops right off. We'll set this aside for now, won't be using it. Once you've got the back off, I'm going to take out the power switch so I don't lose it. And set it aside somewhere where I'll forget about it. And then there are three JIS screws. These are not Phillips, they're JIS. You can use a Phillips bit if you have the correct size and if you apply the correct pressure. Uh, in this case, this is a Phillips bit. But you can see how loose it is in there. It's not great, but thankfully these screws aren't really tight enough that it will make a difference. All right, once you've got those three screws out to pop this out, you just need to slide the bail up on this ribbon cable. And and release the ribbon cable and then the whole motherboard should come right out careful of the speaker and to get the screen out easiest way is to take the casing itself and just kind of give it a twisting motion the adhesive should pop and then I like to stick my finger in the corner and then as I let the shell untwist the other side will pop up and you can remove the LCD You want to make sure this adhesive stays in there that holds the LCD in because you'll be using it for the new kit as well. I'm going to go ahead and save this screen because it's in super good condition and I don't know, maybe someone else can use it or I can try backlighting again. But before I even get into that, we're going to run some power tests because the pocket is notorious for having tremendously shitty battery life. So. I want to see 
how badly this is going to increase or de well, definitely decrease the battery life. I gave my uh, power supply a few upgrades here. I desoldered that original potentiometer and threw a thumb wheel on it. And then I drilled some holes and put some uh, um, banana plug sockets in there. Much more functional now. But just stock, no game. If you adjust the contrast, you can even get better battery life. But on usable level of contrast, it's about 80 milliamps on 2.4 volts. Not great. Not bad. But still not great. Um, we'll try Tetris here. Since my usual testing game won't boot on a Game Boy Pocket. on the main menu, eh, 95 to 97 milliamps. Easy peasy. One more thing we'll try, just because this is a known problem on pockets, my EverDrive here. It's in a custom case, but it is a EverDrive X7. See that jumps up to like 200 milliamps. Um, is it start or select? I can't remember. Select, okay. Open down to recently played. And oh shoot, that was crystal clear. Oh well. You can see how high the power usage jumps up to like 350, 370. The contrast on here isn't getting that low. On normal batteries, the uh, contrast will drop off because the voltage in the system drops real low when it uses that much power because the little AAA batteries just can't put out that much. Um, in this case, it's not really an issue because I'm running the thing off of some lithium batteries and this thing can put out enough current to support this. Um, it's meant to be Pokemon Yellow, but oh well, doesn't matter. Just want to show that it still boots. Another option, you can do an internal lithium-ion battery mod. This one uses a uh, DSi battery, but again, another video for another time. Pop that out. Should not be needing it any longer. And we'll go ahead and get started with the install itself. I'll start with this screen here. When you get this, you should get this random yellow adhesive thing. If you peel off the paper backing, you'll get this. This is pre-cut and designed to be placed right there, just to insulate the screen uh, so you don't have to use any Kapton tape or anything, or electrical tape or anything. Uh, but make sure you do apply that because if you don't, you might have some problems shorting. Uh, next, take the case and I'm going to go ahead and pop out this lens here. Easiest way is to just apply pressure from the inside. And it'll pop out. I used the back of my nail there because I didn't want to, this is a good lens, I didn't want to get fingerprints all over it, but you want to pop out the lens because you probably want to use the new one here. If you take a look, you can see the bezel is quite a bit smaller to account for the smaller screen. This screen is, um, take a look here, this is an original pocket with no batteries in it. 
if you look at the screen, measure it diagonally like most manufacturers do, you can see yeah, it's about two and a half inches. Um, I think, I believe the spec sheet says it's 2.6 inches or something. And plenty big. If you've taken a look at a regular Game Boy Color before, and of course this is a backlit one, but it has a regular lens on it, so we'll just measure the lens. It's about 2.4 inches. Um, the corner, or the, yeah, the corner is right where my thumbnail is. Uh, so it's smaller, but it's still decently big. Uh, but if you look at the screen in this kit, of course this is a Game Boy Color, but it's the exact same kit, same screen. You can see the LCD is just over two inches. Put it right where my thumb is. And I believe the spec sheet says this screen is 2.2 inches. But because it's slightly cropped, you get even less area. It's not bad, but I mean, side to side, it is it is a pretty pretty hefty difference. Just compare the two. If that is a big deal to you, Ben Ben is making a full size kit eventually. Um, He's gone through some hardships recently, but he should still be releasing it. Certainly threatened that threatened that he wouldn't release it. But that's neither here nor there. Okay. So this is why you want to keep that original adhesive in there to hold the screen in. Oops, my button fell out. I want to put that back before I forget it. Like I said, I'm going to try and make some spacers for this thing. Um, the instructions say to center it between these two little nubs down in the bottom. There's... Oh, let me pop that out so you can see that better. I'm going to have to clean that now. There's this little nub on the left, this little nub on the right. The screen should fit nicely between those two. You line it up along the bottom. There should be some space along the top. You're good to go. Uh, out of curiosity, I have my Game Boy Color spacers. I know the big one is not big enough, but the little one looks like it might be just fine. So, I'll see if I can make some new spacers for this. Unfortunately, my 3D printer is currently not working, so I can't really rapid, rapid prototype anything at the moment. But, oops. That'll fold up like that. This will go in here. More or less like that. Flip that closed. And that'll go over like that. Like so. Make sure all your membranes are still there. And then, you can pop your motherboard back in. I'm going to go ahead and install these screws here. And then we'll take a quick break. Well, I'll take a quick break. You guys won't go anywhere. Through the power of uh, video editing. Or something like that. All right, while I was sitting there brooding, I realized I made a slight mistake. Um, nothing mission critical, but before we get this motherboard installed, we probably want to get the touch sensor uh, situated. Now, this here is a touch, you, you just touch it and it'll uh, detect your touch and change the brightness level from that. You can omit this entirely if you want. On the new kit, it's actually this separate little ribbon cable thingy but the idea they want you to stick it behind the power switch here now it's pretty easy to do so in fact you probably don't even need to remove it if you do uh gold contacts down towards the pcb 
Holy cow. There we go. But the idea where are my tweezers? Right there. I want you to stick that behind that. And in hindsight, I probably didn't even need to remove the motherboard, but too a little too late. So that should stay in the power switch area just fine. I also took a few minutes while I was waiting for the camera to cool down to clean off the adhesive around the um, screen lens which you'll want to do if you're replacing the lens, this part right here. Uh, it'll just make for a cleaner install. Again, nothing, nothing mission critical, but okay. Once you've got that screwed down, you'll need to flip this over, insert it, Thankfully, unlike the V1 kit, it is not super, super stiff. All right. And uh, I don't know, just for funsies, let's see what happens if you don't solder on the extra cables. I presume the screen won't boot. Yeah, console boots, but there's nothing on the screen. Figured as much because one of the wires actually goes to the power switch here. All right, so this kit does not come with any wire, or if it did, I already lost it. But in my case, I'm just using 30 gauge Kynar. You can use whatever the hell you want, whatever the hell you have laying around. Um, in my case, I have Kynar. So you want to cut a wire approximately that long. About five centimeters. And yes, I do switch back and forth between metric and imperial. You can thank, uh, I don't know, you can thank someone for that. All right. So the first wire goes on the leftmost pin on the power switch, on the bottom, of course, not the shielding. So it's labeled pin 1. I'm just going to add some extra solder to that. Be a nice chunky thing to solder to. Ain't the cleanest, but good enough. And the other side goes to this left pin closest to the, or pad rather, closest to the power switch itself. And you can just route it straight across. And out of curiosity, again, I'm going to try firing this thing up. It 
probably works, and I think that other one is just to make it more stable, or something along those lines. Yeah. Worst part about the thumb wheel is how sensitive it is, and how I keep accidentally knocking it when I turn this thing off. It boots up. Not as much. But here's the thing. I have no idea what the... Ah. Interesting. I know what the other the other wire is for. Because it looks like this is powered by... The Game Boy's off. <laughs> here's the power usage if you want to see that. That's very interesting. Let's solder the other wire and see what happens. So the wire just goes to this capacitor right here. So you need all of one centimeter worth of wire. Not even. To be honest though, you probably want to make it a little bit longer just to make it easier on yourself. And then just like fold the wire or something. I'm gonna have a hell of a time just stripping this thing. Oh, and as I say that, I got it first try, no issues. All right, so yeah, this goes to this capacitor right now. Which I'm pretty sure does short to this big old ground plane. Anyway, I should probably should check that beforehand. But just in case you accidentally get a big old wobble solder on there or something. Oh. You can't see what I'm doing, I'm sorry. You are done with the mod. You can put a little bit of capped on tape on there if you want to reinforce that. Um, you don't need it. It's not going to short out on anything. Just got to button up your Game Boy. You're done. Pat yourself on the back. Oh, you got to stick a lens on too. But shh, that's details. Alright, so now. Let's see that. Boots up just fine. This is the default brightness, by the way. And if we turn it off, it still does that weird flickery, flickery, then goes out thing. I don't know what that's for. But we should be able to adjust the brightness by tapping the on-off area. Yeah. So let me turn these lights off. You can see the lights off when we tap up here cycles through. Pretty cool, right? Now, oops, I had the wrong light on. Um, oh yeah, let's, let's get some power measurements. How's about that? Before I continue. What did I do with Tetris? Oh, there it is. I don't know why I'm asking you guys, not like you can see. Oh, shoot. One problem of testing this while it's not assembled. I've completely forgotten what the value was. I think it was like about 100. So this is 150, which means, realistically, if you're getting Let's do 
six hours out of your batteries, you'll get about four. Maybe less, because I, I doubt it's linear. If you adjust the brightness all the way down, turn it off, it's still 130. So, mm, four hours, 45 minutes out of six instead. Not great. Not gonna make that big of a difference. Turn it off and you can see it just stays there for a bit and flickers out. It's kind of cool to be honest. And that might just be my pocket, I don't know. I'm eager to find out though. And in this case, I just want to see if it can boot a game from my EverDrive. I don't care that it actually loads the game. I'll have to test this one on batteries though. Like actual alkaline batteries. Contrast is so much better. We'll try Pokemon Yellow this time. Oh shoot, I hope I wasn't covering that. It does boot though. I think I saw that get up to like 370 or 380. And of course this is still a Game Boy Pocket, so the game is not in color. As you can see. Okay. If you kill the power, the screen shuts off right away. Like if you kill, take the batteries out instead of just using the on-off switch. All right, so that's the mod. I think it's pretty easy. Not as easy as the Game Boy Color one because, like I said, you gotta do some soldering. But I don't think the soldering's that bad. Now, I'm going to do a couple extra mods here, because that's what it's about for me. So if all you wanted was the install, feel free to tune out. But if you want some extra goodies, I'll hook you up. So I'm going to leave those wires attached to the motherboard, because I'm still going to need them. But I do need to remove the motherboard to get to the things that I would need to. So there's two things in particular that I want to address. The first is that there is actually a increased brightness mod available for this. And as of the new motherboard, it's easier than the old method. The old method, you had to like desolder a resistor and swap it out with a smaller one or something. I, I don't remember the specifics. You'll have to flip back to my Game Boy Color video. But on this one, it's super easy. If you see, ooh, it focused, nice. If you see these two pads right here, right next to each other, short those together, you'll get higher brightness. So the easiest way to do that, of course that's what I'm doing. We're just gonna put a blob of solder. It ain't pretty, but it don't have to be. And that's it. That's how you get increased brightness. I don't know how much it's gonna affect the console, and you'll have to keep that in mind at the end when I test this on um, double A or uh, alkalines. These things. See if it still boots off that EverDrive, but that's okay. Um, two more things. I'm not actually going to do this mod, but if you want to do use the buttons for brightness control instead of the touch sensor, you can use these two solder pads here. So you'll solder this left one to, for example, select, and then this right one to, for example, the down arrow. So when you hold select and then hit the down arrow, it'll cycle through the brightness levels. There's also another option here, this solder point. This is if you want to use a different touch sensor than this ribbon cable. So same as the old kit, basically. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do something that I haven't tried before, but I'm pretty sure it should work. So on the original kits, and what I kind of do with my Game Boy Color here, I put the... the um, sensor up in the middle instead of blocking off the IR port. 
I'm going to put the sensor over the Nintendo logo. I think this would have a cooler effect on, for example, an opaque Game Boy instead of a uh, transparent one. But the sensor itself is, it's literally just copper. So I have here some copper tape. And I'm going to cut off a piece that is approximately the size of the Nintendo logo, just to cover the whole thing. you can do anything with this tape you do need to attach a wire I'm gonna attach it just by soldering it down but before I get that far I'm gonna try and route my wire because it needs to go on this side so I'm gonna route it up this way I think uh, hopefully that's not too long I'm just gonna guesstimate I'll trim it if it's too long And I'm going to set that on my blade cutter because I don't want to ruin my nice desk mat. I don't have my silicone mat set up like I should. All right. So to solder to copper tape, it's exactly how you think that works. Ta-da! But before I install that, I'm going to go ahead and take another quick break. Get some water, let the phone cool down, etc. Catch in, Jeff. Alright, and welcome back for what I believe will be the final stretch here. Uh, I did go ahead and re-solder that wire because I didn't like how crusty it was looking. But, that's okay. No big deal. We can work with that. Um, once you got that soldered down, you want to solder it before you stick it down, FYI, because otherwise you run the risk of melting and deforming the shell. And you probably don't want to do that. But, you can stick it down right away afterwards. And that's a bit big. That's okay. Oh, I'm making a mess here. Don't worry, I'm a professional. And I'm making it look much more complicated than it is. Okay. Square peg, round hole, etc. Okay. This, I'm going to route that up next to the screen. I don't think it matters, but I'm going to route that around there. And yeah, that wire should be good enough. A hair on the long side. Okay. 
done. Flip that back. Wrap that wire again. Ooh, maybe I should have made it a little bit longer to... Uh... Oh, actually, we can route it inside. Because, you know, it's not like the LCD's taking up all that space. Okay. That's actually super convenient, because now it'll be behind the... Um... The, whatchamacallit, the bezel, instead of off to the side. Oh, it would have been behind the bezel anyway. Forgot how big the bezel is. And yeah, my console's going to have two touch sensors, but I think that's going to be fine. shoot I done goofed hang on I'm gonna pause the video real quick I just want to take some quick measurements for spacers so I don't have to take this apart again ah you know what I'm not even gonna pause the video because if I pause the video then you guys won't have measurements either so I believe the small side is about the same as the Game Boy Color one, so that's probably 3.6 millimeters. And where are my calipers? How did I lose them? I didn't go anywhere. Oh, not on my desk, that's how I lost them. Now it's a little bit bigger at uh, 3.74 millimeters. And eight point, we'll call that eight point, ooh, eight point five. Yeah, that's hitting a little bit of plastic on there. So I think eight point five and shoot, what was that, three point seven five? I don't know, it doesn't matter, it was recorded. Yeah, we'll call it three point eight and whatever the other one was. This whole um, short-term memory thing is too complicated. And you can bend or fold that little ribbon if you need. There is zero issue with that. Oh, shoot. In fact, the uh, instructions on AliExpress say to do exactly that, but it doesn't look like you need to to get it to fit. So, I didn't. I'm just trying to get that in there without having to tape down my wires. And it probably just popped out anyway. Why aren't you going in? What the hell am I doing wrong? Oh, there it goes. This was the angle or something? I don't know. Okay. 
right. I mean, it only fits in the one way. I don't know. Maybe I'm nuts. I don't think that was ever under any question, though. Sorry, mumbling a bit. All right. And yes, don't worry, it is on my mind too. I do want to know what the contrast wheel does. I'm assuming nothing, but it could also do something between that and the other option, which is something. So, find out shortly. I just tapped my soldering iron against my light fixture. My light fixture now has a soldering iron shaped scar. So uh, don't don't do that. Also, I did test it with the multimeter. This big copper pad, or I guess gold pad, next to this capacitor right here. They're they're the same thing. So you can solder to this big copper pad instead of to the capacitor if you want, if it's easier. Or just put put a big old blob. This is this right here. It's connected up to that point on the capacitor. All right, now we are very nearly done. Oh shoot. We want to test and see the power consumption of the uh, brightness mod. But I can't do that with the battery or with the rear cover on. Oops, it's already on. Doesn't look that different to me. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. You guys review the footage and let me know if that looks tremendously different. The power consumption looks to be about the same. What the hell? There we go. That's not right. Hitting the start button shouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, it was just where I had my, uh, in my middle finger on my left hand. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think that brightness does anything. That brightness mod. I'm not seeing it. It's off. There we go. Maybe it's subtle. Or maybe I did it wrong. But I'm not seeing it.
should go together pretty smoothly. And the uh, motherboard itself should hold the screen in between the adhesive and just the small amount of pressure. It's not a tight fit, but it's it's snug. Alright. have managed to misplace the battery cover. It's here somewhere. That, oh, there it is. Oh, before we do that, let's do a couple more things. So, this is what the original lens would look like on here. I'm going to try not to let that sit down. You can see quite a bit of, a bit of the screen on there. It's not great. Not terrible, but it's certainly less than ideal. But this kit comes with this here. And before you peel off the rest of that, just double check, make sure that your screen is actually in the proper place, and mine is. So I'm good to get this installed. You should also Eh, that's probably a fruitless battle. I think this thing's gonna get dusty no matter what. But there you go. And proof that the start button does not lower my brightness. It was just where my finger was. Weird coincidence. You can tap the Nintendo logo to lower it if you want. Alright, let's test out two things. First, I really don't think this contrast wheel is going to do anything. And no, it doesn't. Yeah, nothing. Spooky. But last but not least, we got the EverDrive here. We'll test it out. Before I was so rudely interrupted by my camera, um, got my EverDrive here. Let's go ahead and boot this bad boy up. Let's test it out and see how well it works. So it does boot. That is a good sign. I, I mean, you can't really tell what happens to the contrast there because I don't have it hooked up to a meter or anything. But it does boot, so I think that's good enough. Um, one thing though, I'm going to switch to another game here. I'm going to switch to Pokemon Silver. This is a legitimate version. It's It's got a fake label though, so if it looked off to you. But it is a real game. The original ROM kit, or ROM kit, excuse me, uh, backlight kit for the Game Boy Color that I did in this purple Game Boy that you can hardly see because of the lighting. I'm sure it'll look better on video than it does on screen, but whatever. Um, I had noticed with that kit some frame dropping. I was told that that was just an issue with the quote unquote beta kits. And what I had received was actually a beta unit, and the actual release kits didn't have that issue. Uh, so here's another Pokemon game, see if we can recreate that issue. And I'm going to go up here to the trees, and you can see if you look close how it sort of like skips every second or so. That's the issue that I noticed on the Game Boy Color. Now granted, I was told it was fixed on the Game Boy Color, and this is not a Game Boy Color. 
the Game Boy Pocket, but it should still be the same thing. And this has that issue too. Um, quite frankly, it's really not that big of a deal. It's just one of those things, you know, once you notice it, it's hard to unnotice. And if you're not on the bike, you know, it, I mean, it's still there, yeah. You do see it. But it's, it's really not that big of a deal. I think it's fine. It's just, you know, be aware it's not a perfect solution. Uh, another thing, also really not that big of a deal, you can see the bezel on the screen. It covers the, uh, the actual LCD itself, but you can still see some black bars at the top. Quite frankly, I'm fine with that, but, you know, just, just so you're aware, you know, there's still some black bars. Whatever. Again, not that big of a deal. And my last nitpick of the night, I still gotta really give this thing a good playthrough and see how I like it. Um, and this one is my own fault here. No one else's fault but mine. But if you do put a sensor under the logo, don't make it nearly as wide as I did, because just using the d-pad sometimes I'm hitting it with my thumb and that's not too great but like I said that one's my own damn fault and if I didn't do that you know if I just left the one up here it would be fine Did it shift oh there it goes fingers just in the wrong spot but you know it works it's a good solution um it's, I think even though the LCD image is smaller, I think it's better than the style backlight just because the contrast is so much better. I mean, look at that. In the same lighting conditions, which screen can you see better? Now, granted, this has an extra layer behind it that might be affecting the contrast, but I mean, even if I adjust it, that's just how these screens are. Maybe if I get the right angle, but again, you know, this, this is fine. This one, I don't like it. Maybe your opinion's different. Maybe you do like it. Maybe you think this is pointless. You know, that's your right. You're, you're, uh, you're entitled to your opinion there. And it's as valid as mine is. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of this mod here. I'm going to go ahead and get this video compiled, cute for upload, and um, I'll catch you, in the, catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.